Hello friends, this is again the Open Girl TV. We are back with another video. Um like I said, I think I think I mentioned in the first video that I was going to respond to two ideas, the two aspect of um God need need God net video about seven day Adventism because I believe uh if they are talking about whether your denomination is a cult or Christian and you know for sure they were, they are most likely gonna go to the cult area because they think they know the Bible and we don't. Then it is good to respond to show them. No, I'm not gonna say you are wrong. I'm gonna show why you are wrong and how you misusing the Bible. I think every seven hours should do that, but. Before we move on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's get active. Now, again, I'm going to respond to the second part of Need God Net. So let's see what he is now talking about. Let's see here. Number four, annihilationism. Seventh day Adventists believe that hell is not eternal conscious torment, as the Bible says, but instead they think that unbelievers will simply be annihilated, they'll cease to exist eventually. But that really downplays hell. It makes hell not too bad then. Going extinct in hell is exactly what an unbeliever would want anyway. It's what atheists were expecting, right? But it's not what is going to happen. Because it doesn't fit with the biblical texts, such as Revelation 14, which speaks about people having no rest, day or night, and the smoke of their torment ascending forever and ever. The smoke of their torment can ascend forever and ever because they must be being tormented forever and ever. Number five, invest... Okay. Um, let's, let's go back to that one. Do you realize that in that same verse it says those who receive the mark of the beast? In that same part? I'm not going to go there. Okay. Let's see what he is now talking about. Because that part is very interesting. Because the Bible actually says that the smoke of the torment arise forever and ever. Now, let's begin with our dissection. So, I'm going to read what he was reading because I don't want to just read you know, what he just read. I want to read the whole thing. This is the third angel's message that he was referring to. And in verse number 9, it begins, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark on his forehead or in his hand, so that means there are two ways you can, you can receive the mark of the beast, either in your forehead. Now, it's not literally like a mark, but it means you made a conscientious decision to disregard God's commandment in favor of the beast because you don't want to die. If you go, if you read chapter 13, it will tell you. Or on your hand, because you're afraid to lose your job, you know, manual labor, your hand is for your work, so you're going to give up yourself to the beast and his image or ultimately to Satan. Now, the same, verse number 10, shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. That chapter is referenced to, I believe, the chapter where the bowls are being um, thrown out. I think that's chapter 11. Nope. That would be chapter 15. Yes, the seven last plagues. So chapter 14 is giving reference to chapter 15, which is the bow that is mean, that is going to be falling upon the the wicked, those who worship the beast. Um, verse number 10. And, okay, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, 
and the smoke of their torment ascendeth forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, and what it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the passage that he was referring to, verse number 10 and 11, where it actually clearly says that it will be determined the day and night, meaning that they're going to be burning forever. Okay. So, first thing first. Remember I mentioned that the book of Revelation has a lot of symbol and metaphor metaphors in it. So, not everything is literal. So, let's actually see. Has there any been any other time where Bible mentioned fire and brimstone because if fire and brimstone is used for the destruction of the wicked then they have the same effect now let's go back to the book of Genesis okay like I said guys if you need to understand the Bible you gotta go to Genesis because Genesis tells you where everything begins Genesis and chapter 19. Okay? So in chapter 19 of, of Genesis, we have the the story of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, something interesting happened. In verse number 23, but let's let me go to verse number 20. Where the death were the angel came to to Lot and tell them. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither, and my soul shall live. And the angel said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for the which thou hast spoken. Uh, I haste thee, escape thee thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city is called Zoar. Now, this is the angels you know, speaking to Lot. In verse number 23, the Bible says, The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, what? Brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Right? The Lord, what? The Lord rain upon Sodom and Gomorrah, fire and brimstone. Okay? Now, and you can read the rest of the chapter. Da, 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 da. Okay. So, how many times where the Bible used the word fire and brimstone? If I do a quick you know, search, in the Bible for fire and brimstone, it's not always that the Bible talks about fire and brimstone. Actually, no matter, let me just do a little Google, a little Jesus lyrics. Let me do fire and brimstone. Oops. So, it's only mentioned six times in the Bible. It's mentioned in, of course, you remember, it mentioned in, um, oh, it mentioned in Genesis. It mentioned in uh, the book of Psalm, chapter 11, verse number 6. Upon the wicked, um, he shall rain snails, fire, and brimstone. It's mentioned in Ezekiel 38, um, in Luke chapter twenty nine, chapter seventeen, it mentioned the day that the Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from, from heaven. Chapter forty of Revelation, so and twenty and twenty one. So 
what we do have here is that fire and brimstone is not mentioned all the time in the Bible. Now, if I do it the opposite way, brimstone and fire. Okay, so in total it's seven times, seven times it is mentioned in the Bible. Now, what I'm going to do is we need to find out does God burn people forever and ever? Because according to him, oops, according to him, I'm gonna I wanna listen to it again so we can have an understanding. I wanna know exactly. Let's that was see. exactly what an unbeliever would want anyway. It's what atheists were expecting, right? But it's not what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't fit with the biblical text, such as Revelation 14, which speaks about people having no rest, day or night, and the smoke of their torment ascending forever and ever. The smoke of their torment can ascend forever and ever because they must be being tormented forever and ever. Number five. Okay. So, basically, what he actually believes is they're not actually going to die. They're going to be burning forever and ever throughout eternity. So, let, let's use common sense. How many times do we go and we are driving on the road and there's like a bad traffic and we're thinking, man, this thing is taking forever. Is it really taking forever is it, or is it just like a long process? You know, so let's use common sense. Like I mentioned in the first video, let's use common sense. But we also have to use the Bible. Let's go here. We're going to go to the book of Malachi. Let's go to Malachi. Because I'm pretty sure God would not let us hang in dry. Let's go to Malachi. Actually, no, we're not going to go to Malachi yet. We're going to look at an example for Sodom and Gomorrah. What does the Bible talk about? What does the Bible say about Sodom and Gomorrah the day they were destroyed with fire and brimstone? Let's see. Book of Jude, chapter 1. In the book of chapter 1, the Bible says this about Sodom and Gomorrah. I want you to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to start in verse number 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, how that the Lord having saved the people, the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, meaning Satan and his angel, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains and darkness unto the day of judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day. What day is that? That's the great day of the Lord. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, what? Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So in a sense, whenever you hear the word fire and brimstone, it is connected to eternal fire. The question is, are Sodom and Gomorrah still burning today? I mean, it says right here, they are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. If that fire is eternal, are they still burning today? The answer is no. But we cannot just use one verse to explain that. Let's go more. Let's go more. Malachi. Malachi chapter 4. God begins. You remember the great day of the Lord. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, ye all that do wickedly, shall be stumbled, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave neither root 
no bridge. Does that sound like something that's going to be burning forever and ever? If it is not going to leave root or branch, that means ev everything is going to be burned up. Let's continue. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun righteousness all rise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet in the day the Lord that the, that I shall do this as the Lord of hosts. Basically, what does that mean? This means when God comes to destroy the wicked in the world, they will become as ashes under the sole of, the of their feet. If something becomes ashes, that means it's not burning anymore. It's only the smoke that has, that, 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 that comes up. And after a while, there will be no more smoke. Because for there to be smoke, it has to keep burning. But, but, what is God's version? <laughs> God's version is very simple. Man. God's version is very simple. Notice this. Notice what the Bible says here. I, John chapter 3 verse 16. For actually verse 13. And no man has to... Okay, 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 okay. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This right here he says, who believeth, 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 believeth in him should not perish. Right? So that means if you don't believe in him, you will perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I'm going to go to the you know, KTP Plus. So we can see what that word perish mean. Is it burning forever or is it to die? Perish. Perish means to destroy fully. That means those that do not believe in Jesus Christ, they will when they get burned with that fire and brimstone, they will be destroyed fully. Not that they're going to be perishing, but that they will perish. They will die, not dying. They will be burned up, not burning forever and ever. Now, we are almost done. We are almost done. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Chapter 2. Revelation, verse number 11. Bible says this, verse number 10. Fear none of those things that shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall come, shall cast some of you into prison, that ye have be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an he ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the what? Of the second death. Didn't say the second burning forever. The second death. Chapter 20. Chapter 20. Chapter 20. Verse number 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Didn't say the second burning forever or the second torment forever. Second death. My friend, my friend, 
Let me tell you something. Nobody is burning forever and ever and ever in hell. This is why we have so many atheists because of the lies. I don't I don't want to say you are lying, but the wrong information, your inability to understand death, second death versus burning forever. What else? Chapter 20, verse 14. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in it, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. You realize even death will be dead? Man. Chapter 21. Verse number 18. Verse number 18. Oh, verse number 8. My bad. Verse number 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is what? The second death, like I said before, like I said earlier, when it comes to, when you hear the word fire and brimstone, it's related to the second death. It's you're not dying or burning forever and ever. Therefore, we can say, we can say that when God says that the same shall drink of the water of the wrath of God, which is put out without mixture. And it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. That fire and brimstone, which is the second death. When the Bible says that the smoke of the torment is sin forever and ever. It doesn't literally mean forever and ever. But it basically means the consequence, the result of them burning in that fire and brimstone. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That I, we are, which actually experience everlasting or eternal vengeance, fire, that result of that fire is forever and ever. They will be burning for a time, become ashes under the sole of your feet, and they will be dead, they will perish, not be perishing, they will perish and that result will be forever and ever but let me know in the comment section below comment guys comment please Co I want to know your thought on that comment below if you have any questions ask me you can don't 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 just ask and I think God will definitely give me the tools to answer any question that you may have or ex if it's from the Bible. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. And don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button as well. Again, this was the Open Veil TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.